So when it comes to Xiaomi's fresh new flagship smartphone, the Mi 11, I'm doing things kind of slightly backwards. Regular Spurtons will of course know that I've already fully reviewed the Mi 11, but I haven't actually done an unboxing for it. I've had lots of people saying, where's the unboxing, what's going on? The reason for that was because my Mi 11 review handset was actually pre-retail, so it didn't even come in a box, it was literally in a padded envelope. But now I've got a proper boxed retail version of this absolute monster, so I'm going to do that unboxing video now. Apologies again for missing out on it before. So here's everything you need to know about the Mi 11. Full on tour of all of the software, the various features, and all of that good stuff. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So now at last we'll be able to answer the all-important question, does the Mi 11 come with a bundled condom case? Let's dive on in. So you've got one very beefy smartphone, you've got your Type-C USB charging cable. Unlike Samsung and Apple, you do actually get a charging adapter bundled in the box too. You've got yourself a user guide. You've got a Type-C to 3.5mm adapter. And yes, oh glorious day, oh wonderful day, you do get a bundled condom case. So that's the box, now let's actually move on to the phone itself. And gotta say, I've really enjoyed spending some time with the Mi 11. Really, really helped along by the fact that it's not quite as gargantuan as the Mi 10 T Pro from last year. This is the gorgeous midnight blue version of the Mi 11, which is almost white when the light is really striking off that surface. And otherwise, you can sort of see those uh, pale blue hues really shining through as well. Uh, definitely very attractive. You can also grab the Mi 11 in midnight grey if you prefer a darker moodier hue as well. That frosted glass has proven nice and durable over time as well my review unit. Not a single scratch or scuff despite the fact I didn't exactly treat it with kid gloves. You've got a Gorilla Glass Victus Corton on that display which is drop proof as well as scratch resistant and then as if that wasn't enough you've also got a screen protector slapped on there as well. So basically the Mi 11 is tougher than Bruce Lee after being dunked in concrete. Unfortunately the Xiaomi Mi 11 does not have official IP water and dust resistance you know what? It's been absolutely fine. I've taken it out in the rain. I've lightly splashed it with water. That's about as far as I dare go. I don't actually uh, have the cojones to dunk it into a proper sink, bath, whatever. So if you're looking for a water-resistant smartphone around this sort of price point, you might want to look at something like the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition instead. But yeah, the more time I spend with the Mi 11, the more I really, really like it. I like the fact that the branding is rather minimalist. I like the curvature of the edge and the way that the, uh, the edge just opens up there as you get to the volume keys and the power button. I even like the funky camera array which looks like something straight out of a sci-fi film. Although yes this does jut somewhat from that back end of the Mi 11 which means inevitably if you're resting the Mi 11 on a desk or another flat surface and using it you will get a little bit of tremble. And Xiaomi has also kindly sent me the official protective case thing if you fancy something a bit snazzier than the old prophylactic effort bundled in the box. So let's check this out. Oh, I'm quite liking the feel of that as well. It's got nice soft texture to it, kind of a fabric-y finish. Mmm, smells lush as well. And that just snaps on like so. As you can see, plenty of space left for the uh, that massive camera bump at the back. And you've got uh, special little silver buttons for the power and the volume. And that case just rises up above the display just to add a bit of extra protection in case the, uh, the phone was to face plant the ground, although of course you do have that Gorilla Glass Victus and that screen protector anyway, so all good. Anyway, when you come to set up the Xiaomi Mi 11, you'll notice that it's a dual SIM setup in here. As you can see there, dinky little dual sided SIM tray, sadly no space in here for a micro SD memory card though, like a lot of flagship smartphones, there's bugger all expansion. Thankfully you do get choice of 128 or 256 gigs of storage with the Mi 11. And like most smartphones around this price point, it's UFS 3.1 as well, so nice nippy storage, great news if you're downloading a lot of apps, you're transferring a lot of files, etc. Now let's check out the software here on the Xiaomi Mi 11. And the good news is it's nice and fresh Android 11, the latest version of Google's OS, with Mi UI 12 slapped on top, Xiaomi's very own launcher. And this serves up all the very best new Mi UI features. So for instance, you can drag down the notifications bar as usual, but if you drag down on the right hand side, you can open up that fresh iOS inspired control center. Fast access to all of your uh, shortcuts and everything, and of course, a good bit of small time action too. And one of my other ultimate favorite MIUI features as well, something I haven't seen on other launches, uh, certainly none that I've personally tested out anyway, is the ability to drag out this little media control bar when you're watching a bit of YouTube or whatever. You can swipe to the sides here, and what you can actually do is play a video with the screen off, which is great news if you want to listen to an audio book or a podcast or something on the likes of YouTube. I Means you can do so with the phone safely ensconced in your pocket or whatever when you're strutting down the street and then when you get back you can just unlock the phone and as you can see it's still playing 
all happily and merrily. And with MIUI 12, Xiaomi has certainly sorted out most of my grievances with this launcher, such as, for instance, you've now got an apps tray to hide away all your stuff. You don't have to have it cluttered all over your desktops. Definitely a massive bonus. And I know that some people are down on MIUI in general, saying that it's just full of adverts and the like. I tell you what, I haven't seen a single advert on the Mi 11 and I've used it for over a week as my full-time smartphone, so no issues on that front. The security app is still an absolutely fantastic fast access uh, hub, if you will, to many of the best features that you'll find on MIUI, so the likes of the Game Turbo, uh, Second Space Dual Apps. One of my few complaints with MIUI that's still hands true, it's not actually specifically MIUI, it's Xiaomi phones in general, is the fact that you get an awful lot of crapware pre-installed on here. You get the likes of Facebook and TikTok comes on here by default. You've got all these cack sounding games that basically just look like rip-offs of other games like sort of Tetris and Pong and stuff like that. I'm still yet to actually play Tile Fun, so I'm not sure exactly how much fun it is, but probably about as much fun as you would expect you would have with some virtual tiles. Yeah, probably about as much fun as sticking your junk in a bucket full of battery acid or watching an unbox therapy video. Now another area that Xiaomi has pretty much nailed is the screen tech. You've got this gorgeous 6.81 inch AMOLED panel, absolutely massive, pretty much stretches edge to edge very skinny bezels especially around the actual sides here whereas you can see the display kind of slopes off over the edge it's a quad hd plus that's 3200 by 1440 pixel resolution panel so incredibly crisp fine detail when you're watching a bit of you know 4k content something like that something that really takes advantage of that gorgeous resolution and if you dive on into those video tools which i yanked out for you fine fork earlier you'll see you've got some video upscaling options in here as well so for instance if you've got some crappy 720p looking video uh, it can boost up the resolution of that using a bit of ai smarts you've got various filter effects on here as well which is quite funky if for instance you want to watch a modern movie in black and white see how it would look in good old monochrome and you've got some other video features such as for instance a smoothen uh, option as well enhanced contours to be honest i tried toggling these on and off didn't really notice much difference at all in the majority of videos that i watched so you know they're there to sort of play around with if you want to give them a go i did notice when comparing this phone side by side with the galaxy s21 that samsung's bro produced more nicer looking warmer tones when uh, watching certain movies but you know what it doesn't really matter you get natural looking colors here on the Xiaomi Mi 11, it's got a just noticeable color difference of 0.38, which is a really good, accurate finish. And that's coupled with strong contrast thanks to that OLED tech. You've got full HDR 10 Plus support here on the Xiaomi Mi 11, and that is supported in the likes of Netflix as well. And dive on into the display settings, you've got pretty much control over everything in there as well, including the refresh rate, which maxes out at 120 hertz. That is the default setting as well. You can bump that down to 60 hertz if you want to save on the battery life, but frankly, just leave it up there. So silky smooth. Yum! So certainly the visuals are rather stunning here on the Mi 11, if not quite as punchy and in your face as what you'll get on the likes of the Galaxy S21. As for the audio, it's a stereo speaker setup. You've got uh, sound being pumped out the top end as well as that bottom speaker as well. Let's just bump up the volume. It can survive for absolutely bloody ages on just a single charge of the battery. We're talking weeks here, while most smartwatches shoot their load in just a day or two. So the good news is that Mi 11 uh, output is rather spiffing indeed. It's slightly unbalanced. You will get more powerful output from the bottom end compared with the top end, but it's not like that top speaker is weedy or tinny like you get on some smartphones. I'm looking at you, Pixel 5. So I'm certainly more than happy kicking back with a bit of Netflix, YouTube, whatever, using the built-in speakers. But of course, if you want to listen to some music, get some proper nice sound and audio, you will want to hook up some speakers or a pair of headphones. Unfortunately, dun dun dun, bugger all headphone jack, hence the fact that you get an adapter bundled in that box. Now, to be honest, I just used the Bluetooth uh, smart on here, Bluetooth 5.2 supported. You've got high-res audio uh, certification on here as well, so you can listen to that really nice crisp sound and audio. Full LDAC support for a decent pair of headphones. So yeah, I'm just reviewing a really nice pair of banging Olufsen headphones. Connect those to this bad boy, an absolute audio heaven. It's like Jesus himself is spaffing in your ears. And another reason I love the Mi 11 so much is you've got Qualcomm's freshest Snapdragon 888 chipset smashed into this bad boy and that means you get absolutely tip-top performance from this thing no matter what you're up to and that's backed here by eight gigs of ddr5 ram as well nice and nippy so of course it doesn't matter what you're doing if you tap on an app it basically loads up instantly no pissing about split screen multitask all that good stuff no worries and of course gaming is a dream the Adreno 660 GPU just chuckles itself hoarse at whatever game you chuck its way. It's like, what is this all you've got? Even the likes of Genshin Impact 
bumped up to the Billy Big Bollocks ultra high crazy uh, detail levels. It's still just like, yeah, this is fine. I can handle this. The occasional tiny little judder on those maxed out detail settings, but seriously, really, really smooth. And yeah, if you are playing competitively in the likes of Call of Duty online, something like that, no worries as well. 480 hertz touch sampling rate, so every single little poke and swipe instantly uh, responds here on the Mi 11. And the Snapdragon 888 also comes with that X60 modem built in there. So you've got full 5G support from the off. You've also got Wi-Fi 6. Basically, all of the snazzy new tech is supported. As for the battery tech, well, it's a 4,600 milliamp battery shoved inside of this bad boy. So not quite as big as the likes of the S21 Ultra. But I'll tell you what, I found that coupled with that Snapdragon 888 chipset, which of course is super energy efficient, I found that the battery life was brilliant on this thing. I had to really, really struggle to get it down to minimum sort of levels by bedtime. I never managed to actually completely drain it no matter what I was up to. And the bundled adapter supports 55 watt charging as well, so you'll be back up to full again in under an hour. You've also got support for 50 watt wireless charging if you've got a uh, charging pad that's up to that task. And let's finish up this unboxing and full tour of Xiaomi's fresh new Mi 11 flagship smartphone with the squint at that triple lens rear camera tech headed up by a meaty 108 megapixel primary shooter using a Samsung HMX sensor with built-in OIS. Now the first time you load up Xiaomi's Mi UI camera app, it can be slightly intimidating, shall we say, because there's a lot to take in here. First of all, of course, you can dive between the standard primary shooter and the ultra wide angle lens, which is a 13 megapixel effort just with a quick tap down here. Then you've got all the various toggles up top as well, such as, for instance, you can switch off the HDR. If you like, I just left that on auto the whole time. You can turn the AI camera on or off. This just basically adapts the uh, the camera settings to suit whenever you're trying to take a shot of, although sometimes I did find this sort of boosted colors unnaturally, so I tended to leave that uh, well alone, to be honest. Uh, you've also got the obligatory filters, of course, lots of different random bits to choose from there. You've got Google Lens support, and then if you dive in here, even more stuff. You can change the aspect ratio, at a timer, uh, you've got various other bits as well, including the super macro mod, hooray. And I've got to say overall, I was impressed with the Mi 11's camera. The shutter speed is super, super fast. The autofocus is fantastic as well. So as you can see there, it just latches onto your subject. Uh, even from a distance, it can be very, very good at sort of discerning that there's a human subject and that it needs to track them. And then there's the bonus mode. So for instance, you've got full pro controls. If you want to dive in here, play about with the ISO levels, get a very precise kind of results. You got the portrait mode, which I absolutely adore. You got a lot of people on YouTube banging on about the S21, the S21 Ultra in particular, about how it's got the best portrait mode ever. The Mi 11 could take it for a run for its money any day of the week. And then if you hit more, if you dare to hit more, you will be confronted with even more stuff, obviously. You can shoot at that 108 megapixel uh, maximum resolution if you like, as long as the lighting conditions are all right. Uh, but to be honest, I would just stick with the default uh, settings for the most part, because this tends to produce the more balanced results. The night mode is pretty good. This just shoots lots of different uh, photos at different aperture levels and then melds them all together for nice, pleasing, again, quite balanced results, quite bright, even in low light situations. And then the majority of the other camera bonus modes here on the Mi 11 are video related. And I gotta say again, the video chops on this thing, absolutely fantastic. I tend to shoot at 4K level at 60 FPS on this bad boy. That produces nice, smooth results, great looking videos, lots of detail uh, packed in there, uh, but you can, if you want to boost it all the way up to 8K resolution at 30 FPS if you so desire, or you can drop it down to a more cinematic 24 FPS. One of the options in here that I really liked was the track moving object. Uh, as you can see, that does top off at 1080p, unfortunately. You can't get 4K or 8K on the go with that option. But what it can do is basically crop into uh, the shot and follow a subject around uh, while keeping them in focus. It really works stunningly well, even with hyperactive, annoying children. The one thing you're really missing here on the Xiaomi Mi 11 is a proper telephoto lens, unfortunately. The third lens is a telemacro effort instead. It's a five megapixel one. It's okay for getting sort of all up close shots with something that's dinky, uh, but how often are you gonna need that, honestly? So I did kind of miss the, uh, the proper telephoto zoom of a lot of rivals. But here, oh, you can't have everything. At least you've got that 108 megapixel mode, so you know you can take a shot with that and then crop in uh, instead. And it's not quite the same, it's not quite as good, but it'll do the job. And then last up, you've got a 20 megapixel selfie snapper just housed up here in the corner. And again, I found this was absolutely fantastic just for getting simple, basic shareable shots. 
uh, that you can chuck online or not uh, in the case of this precise photo here. Bye bye. But anyway, if you want to know more about the Xiaomi Mi 11, as I say, my full in-depth review is live right now, including a full camera review. So you can go check out my photo and video samples that I shot with this bad boy. And I also have compared it side by side with the Galaxy S21 as well, if you want to see how it stacks up to Samsung's big competition. So that's what I think, but it'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. Have you already pre-ordered your Mi 11? Are you looking forward to getting your hands on one or are you just not tempted at all? Be great to hear your thoughts behind that one. Please do plug, subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.